What's up everybody, this is Altmish Nir Khan, also known as Atish, and I'm from Game Designer Online. And I'm creating a brand new series that will hopefully be useful for people that do not want to use C Sharp to create games using the Unity Engine. Of course, this tutorial series is basically very new, and I will only continue this if I if the viewers actually leave feedback and tell me what they want to see next. S this will also help me determine whether or not this tutorial series is actually useful or not for people. I will see whether people actually enjoy doing this or enjoy watching this. Okay, so let me explain I've been using Bolt for over a year, for over a year, and it's a wonderful tool, a very wonderful tool, and I have created numerous games for my clients using Bolt only, and it works. Now I'm going to show you today inside the Universal Render Pipeline how to use Bolt. I assume that you know a bit about Unity. If you don't, I'm here to answer questions. In, to, in order to install Bolt, now it's free. When I had Bolt, it wasn't free. I bought it for $70. Now it's free. You can go to the asset store and import it into your project. However, when you install it or import it, this is what you will see. You can double click this and it will ask you well, uh, to import certain scripts. I already have them imported. When you import it, you will see a wizard. And I'm actually going to check where this... Oh yeah, there it is. So... I'm going to see where the wizard is because I don't really know the new bolt where the actual wizard is. It was configuration, yes setup wizard, there it is. So setup wizard, it used to be in a different menu when Ludic had this asset so now it's different. I'll click next and I'll click human naming. I'll add all the assemblies that I want to add here. If you're new, you don't need to be worried about this. I'll hit next and then I'm going to... The one thing that I will add that this bolt does not have is player prefs. I just added player prefs by typing player prefs here, okay? That's what I did. And I hit generate. It's already done so I don't need to do it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to print hello world in the console and add and subtract using bolt. First, like I said, I assume that you know a bit about Bolt, so here I am, I'm going to create empty, I'm going to create a Bolt example. This is a new scene, I'm going to set this to 0, 0, 0, and this is our game object, the camera is set to orthographic, and this is the universal render pipeline. And if you don't know how to do this, well, I'm here to answer. Once I've got the Bolt example set up, I'm going to go over, I'm going to create a new folder called Game Designer Online, which is also uh, my website, name of my website, I'm going to create it, Game Designer Online. I do this for all of my projects. I'm going to create a C Sharp script just to sh tell you what, uh, how Bolt works and how we can do the exact same things in this visual system, visual scripting system. So C sharp script, I'm gonna say Bolt example, Bolt print example. Okay. So even if you have a C sharp script, you can access it in Bolt. So the first thing we're going to learn is how to use your already existing C Sharp scripts in Bolt. You're going to open this up and we're, this is, by the way, I'm using Visual Studio Code so don't be surprised if you see this. I've got my own theme 
well, I use a theme called Dracula. Okay, so right now we're going to actually create a function, and I assume you already know how to create functions, which will basically be, uh, and a few variables. So we'll say string, hello, hello world, hello world. Okay, we did that. Now we're going to say serialized Oh yes, uh, this is this is a problem that happens in uh, Unity when you open it in Visual Studio uh, in, in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to uh, fix this. Hang on a minute. That's the reason why nothing was actually working. It's because uh, Unity does not have very good support for Visual Studio Code. So uh, this is a very easy fix. I'll just go over and I'll open up the C# project. Now it's going to work. There it is. Uh, this happens in Visual Studio Code. Uh, the first time th uh, these errors or delays can occur. Serialized field uh, in integer 1. And we're going just going to copy paste this for integer 2. I assume you already know what uh, this is. Serialized field is basically to actually show the variables private variables in the editor. So this d uh, we will actually just add and print. So we're going to create a function for that. So it's a public void function. Public void print values. We're going to make a summary to print to print values for this tutorial. format this. I'm going to say print hello world and we're going to basically print integer 1 plus integer plus integer 2 and this is just going to print this uh, we're basically just going to print this and using this in the start method, using the start method or the start function. So calling print function here. Okay, so we've done this. Now we are going to basically run it in Unity. Okay, we're going to play the scene and hopefully it will play in the console. maximize on play another thing that I noticed is that I did not actually put the script here so we'll just place the script bolt example for example there it is integers 2 plus 2 so we're going to do that now and we are going to maximize on plays off this is also by the way don't be surprised this is my layout this is how I work so there you go so we printed hello world and we printed four let's do this in bolt now first of all I like to make one thing very clear that you can use C sharp scripts inside Bolt. So let's take a look at that first. Then we're just going to use Bolt. So your existing projects, even if you have like full, full C sharp scripts written already, and you still want to use Bolt, well, you can, and this is how. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take our existing C sharp script and use Bolt on it. So this is how we do it. We're going to go to Bolt example. This is the script. We're basically going to access the script in Bolt. We're going to write a flow machine. All right, there are two types of uh, machines in Bolt, flow machine and state machine. For the purpose of this, uh, f f f 
for this video I'm going to use the flow machine and I'm going to name my flow machine I'm going to create a new flow macro which is well it's like a function let's just put it that way oh it's a, like a it's actually like a class game designer online scripts and we're going to put bold print example and you can see it's it it automatically attached itself here we're going to put in bold print example script for script for tutorial okay functions functions for functions for tutorial okay what's wrong with me today I can't type properly okay okay so we do have this C sharp script but Bolt does not know so whenever you create a new C sharp script and you want to access it in Bolt you're going to go to Bolt over here we are going to, going to say update unit options once you do this y the Bolt will now take all of your existing C sharp scripts and add it into Bolt we're going to go to edit graph and the start remember that there's always a start function we're just going to say call the name of a function which is print values print values and that's it here we've got this C sharp script called inside bolt so what I did is I just uh, left clicked on this little arrow extended it and then lifted my finger off and wrote print values and since the script is already on this game object we don't need to actually pass another game object to this okay so now hopefully when we uh, play this it, it's still going to run remember there's no start function now so it's still going to run okay and you can see it's still printed alright so it worked now we're going to remove this and we're going to remove the script from this game object we're going to remove the script and we're going to do all of this in bolt in order to do this in bolt we first need to go over to object and we need to define our integers so we're going to say integer 1 we're going to hit enter which is the name of the variable this will be an integer variable okay we're going to call integer sorry with a small integer 2 this will also be an integer once we did that now we're going to say a hello world and this is a string okay now we're going to print this first of all we will need to add this and store it somewhere so there are two ways of doing this well there's only one way but uh, let me go with a simpler way then we're going to extend it again right uh, left click on this extend it and then release we'll say add sorry print so we're going to print a message the message will be okay now how do you create units this is how you create units so remember that what I did is I went over here left clicked and then dragged and dropped this arrow somewhere I wrote print and I selected the mono behavior print this is what I did now I want to print something we're gonna right click add unit and add an add unit see add there are various types of ads we are going to go with 
math generic add. We're going to drag and drop this integer over here and connect it by dragging and dropping this like that. We're going to take this integer and drag and drop it just like that. We need to convert this into a string. We're going to extend this and now write integer int to string. And it says integer to string. This is what this is the unit we require. And as soon as we place this over here, the error goes away. In order to create groups, we are going to press control, press control, left click, and start creating a group. I'll release my left mouse button now, and the group is created. Now, adding two numbers here. Okay. We'll go over and click this print message unit. Control D to duplicate it and connect the flow of this to this. We're going to print the hello world message now. That's it. So it still says there's an error. I don't know why this is. Message cannot be null. Well, that's strange because I just assigned a value to that. Anyway, uh, the reason is it doesn't have anything. So hello world. Hopefully now it's not going to have a null value. Yes, it doesn't. Again, grouping this. Print hello world. Okay. So now you can move this anywhere you want. It's good for organizing. Okay. Hit play. And of course I made a mistake. This will this will be zero, right? Okay. So <sighs> In order to fix this, we're going to go over to the edit graph again. We can also change it over here if you want. We'll just change it over here. We'll say 3 and 2. So remember that the variables that are over here and the object variables, they also show on the object itself. And there are various types of variables. If I didn't, I didn't say that in the start, I didn't create a graph variable. I created an object variable. This is a scene variable, app variable. We will go over that in a later video. Right now in object variable I created all of these variables. So object and I created all of these. So anyway, now we're going to run this. And there you go. So that's your first uh, introduction to Bolt. Take care and I'll see you in the next video hopefully.